Uh, well, thank you for coming. All of you. This is wonderful. It's so exciting. You just feel the life of the Spirit with us. And thank you. The Apostle John writes, We know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. And whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And, he writes, we love because he first loved us. Notice the order of things. He loves first, and then we love him back. He gives, and then we pass along his gift out of gratitude. Just as he created us in his image, so when we love when we give, when we create, we mirror his good, his good work. So he acts and we respond. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul writes, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As the song we'll sing in a few minutes says, your love is like radiant diamonds <laughs> bursting inside us. So we've come to meet with Him, to wait upon Him, to stand before Him, to be renewed by Him, to tell Him that we love Him because He first loved us. bless you and praise you and we do indeed have indeed come to meet with you we thank you that it is at your invitation that we do so 
And so we've come to your house, um, and you've prepared a table for us, laid a feast in front of us of plenty, of goodness, of love, of redemption, the filling of your spirit. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place is reserved for your children. And so, Lord, we come to gather and meet at your table and enjoy your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
started with the incarnation, started with the Son of God taking on flesh. With the life he lived, the things he taught. Then to be crucified, like, do you know, I think by all, all measures, Humanity has not devised a more cruel or humiliating way to execute someone than crucifixion. Uh, I mean, in the Middle Ages, they tried to invent, and they, they had some pretty nasty things, no question. But the prolonged humiliation combined with the pain involved in crucifixion is just mind-blowing. Jesus went through that for us. Mm -hmm. But he did not stay in the grave. He rose again. Hmm. It's because of that.
no better place to be than to surrender to your design. As uh, somebody in this room said to me once, some years ago now, and you know who you are, 
when I realized that I had to come to God on his terms, it wasn't that he had to come to me on my terms. That's when I knew that God loved me and that I was willing to surrender to his design. Lord, help us all today to surrender anew and afresh in whatever area of our life we need to, to your design for our life. Your plans are perfect. Your love is perfect. And cast out all fear. We love you because you first loved us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, there's so many people here that could get stage fright. Man. <laughs> But that's good because I, I want to share some history this morning. Let's start in Genesis because that's the beginning of history, right? Genesis chapter 14 verse 17 talks about, it says, After his return from the defeat of the Chedor, of, no, I can never get this right, Chedorlaomer, and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom, went out to meet with him at the valley of Sheva, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. And, and Isaac shares that after victory they shared bread and wine. And it's, it's, it's in Genesis it started, right? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. So that's, in Genesis, the first time we ever hear of a tithe, and it's man to man. Then in uh, Genesis chapter 28, verse 16, we're talking about Jacob. It says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning, Jacob took the stone that he'd put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. Now, this scripture is, now, the first scripture is a tithe to man. This is a, now Jacob promising to give a tithe to God. My question is, um, how does he give a tithe to God in the wilderness when, I mean, God doesn't need a tenth of what Jacob has. So my, my imagination, it doesn't say this in Scripture, but my imagination is that God's going to tell him who to give the tents to, who to help with, with the tents, and he will honor that. So then we go, in history, now we're in Leviticus, my favorite book, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Le Leviticus 27, starting in chapter 30, says, Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the trees is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wishes to redeem some of his tithes, he shall add a fifth to it. And every tithe of herds and flocks, every tenth animal of all that pass under the herdsman's staff shall be holy to the Lord. One shall not differentiate between good or bad, neither shall he make a substitute for it, and if he does substitute for it, then both it and the substitute shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. So there's a couple of things from this. Now God, God's finally saying to man, you promised me a tenth. And now we're going to make it the law. But there's, you have to understand from, from Jacob to uh, Leviticus, there's centuries gone by, several centuries of man making promises to God and not keeping them. And uh, when I'm in trouble, it's easy to make a promise when you're in trouble. But when, when it comes down to it, God's saying, "Now, you know, be true to your word, because I'm true to my word." And it, it goes on. The the other important thing in this is that, uh, that when the when the herds are going under the staff, it's not 
always the best one that's going to be God's. It's going to be, it, it, there's no differentiating. And that's the same with us. Our to our whether we can give a lot or give a little, um, it honors God because it's coming from the heart and it's coming from a place of your ability to give. So I just want to encourage us in that. But that's my history lesson for today. So let's pray. Father, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you that uh, you um, encourage us to live up to our word and that uh, when you put something on our heart, we should uh, live up to that also. We should obey that, even sometimes when we don't understand what you're asking us to do. Lord, as we return tithes and offerings this morning, I ask, uh, I pray that uh, it will be a fitting offering to you, that it would accomplish what it's, it's there for it to do, and that uh, all who give would be blessed, and all who receive the, the end result would also be blessed. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So before our children go out, I have a word for you. <clears throat> you know, adults are wise, wiser than children, but children bring us life. And I've noticed since we had more little ones, especially your family right here and then Seth's family, you, got, you the younger ones, come in smiling. And the more you smile, the more we smile. Because we think we got to just do the same thing you do, see? So the scripture also says, and the children shall lead them. So that's how you're leading us. You're teaching us to smile back at you. The children, keep your smiles. Adults, keep your smiles. The smiles is a welcoming thing. And may we bring honor and glory uh, to the Lord. So... Anyway, so Karen's uh, got some things for you this morning. So, God bless you, little ones. And we've never, we've never minded, we've said this lots of times, we've never minded children crying. That's part of the life. Uh, there are limits. Adults, we don't want you crying. Okay? <laughs> don't cry. But your children can cry. So uh, bless the Lord. And we're together today to encourage one another. And so may we do that through the rest of the morning as we enjoy coffee later on. So today, uh, you enjoyed Vienna's sharing last week from the Philippines. And by the way, we're going to have to learn to be a little bit more like the Filipino people. They kind of pull together a bit more. You know, us North Americans like a little elbow room. You know, so with the Asian countries, they're just a little closer, you know, so don't be worried about getting closer. So, so anyway, uh, so Nestor, her dear husband, and she does have a husband, so now you'll, you've seen him last week and this week, you'll hear him. But I want to tell you that this it will be the first time Nestor has preached a full sermon in English. So we, we think it's going to be English. Nestor, we're, we're kind of counting on that, but so anyway, um, Nestor knows four languages. He speaks four languages. The problem with the Philippines is, is we get messed up because we have two in this country. Yeah, we have trouble. Huh? Well, Nestor, ha there's four languages, including tribal languages that, so that Nestor speaks and thinks in. And, uh, and there's way more languages than that. I don't know how many, how many languages are there in the Philippines altogether? There's more than four, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Well, we don't expect you to know 200 languages, but <laughs> anyway, so, so anyway, we, we appreciate you. Nest, Nestor's uh, pastored for quite a number of years uh, in the Philippines, and he's uh, been in a little mountain church for a long time, and and now he's closer into the book, and he actually lives with his wife, which is a really good thing, <laughs> in, a, in a little, little uh, building, little cement house or apartment, I don't know what you call it, and it's very hot. Talk, I was talking to Vienna last night about dealing with the heat, and she says there's just nowhere to go. You know, when, when we get hot, we 
find a river or something to jump into. But anyway, uh, they're both here today, and um, God bless you, Nestor. So I'm going to have you come forward, and um, I think he's going to start off with a little video, but he's going to explain that. Good morning. <laughs> I'm just confusing or struggling about the uh, dialect. That's uh, <laughs> It's, it's it's like uh, difficult, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to express what uh, what God's put in our heart, in my heart, to to encourage uh, each one of us. So, uh, be, before we go to the the message of the Lord, I just want to uh, have a short clip that my background. Is uh, written in there. I, I, I did not I did not put the uh, details, but at least you can see what 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 I'm doing in in the Philippines uh, to to serving the Lord in there. So. Thank you. That's uh, that's the uh, short clip. That uh, uh, just uh, just a background for our working in in the Philippines. Uh, I, I have so many 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 photos that uh, I am trying to get a, a take a picture for if I'm experience like hard or experience the very very muddy or something to to bring good news for other uh, other people in the mountain range so that's uh, that's my short uh, background that uh, maybe you can, you can ask later if you if you want to ask what what's what's my ministry but for now yes i'm 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 working with the, with with my wife with 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 my wife <laughs> to uh doing i'm 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 with them in the in their uh ministry too although for i'm 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 a freelancer pastor that's what we call freelancer pastor doing going other other churches and encourage some 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 member or uh believers in the other church so yeah that's that's my basic or <laughs> basic background for 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 our work so today i just i just uh, i like to sharing about a short uh, i don't know how how many how many minutes that i can <laughs> consume i'm i'm just uh, sharing about uh, about about the light yeah light Lights are very important to, for everyone, yeah. Because if you if you're in in the dark, 
or yeah, if you're in the dark, you did not know where where you're going. So that's the I I'm, I'm just trying and when 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 my father-in-law said me that I'm sharing a uh, I'm I'm sharing a word in one Sunday. I'm just praying and praying and praying and. How many pray? <laughs> <laughs> then I realized that one one that I I share is about uh, about the light. It's a, sometimes we did not understand what light is. I I, I think every, every one of us is uh, we we don't know how 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 we can uh, how we can encounter the light. The light is uh, that's God created. That we need, we 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 need a light to everyone to enlighten our life. Everyone who knows when the light start, we did not know when when the light start. But the Bible says we can see the uh, not approximate. It's just an estimation where where the light is. He start in the in the beginning. Amen. Yeah. So sometimes this is what I I, I share to you that sometimes in the Christmas season I think we can see every house. I don't know what what's your culture here. I don't know that in the Philippines sometimes they they can celebrate the Christmas, and uh, I observe that. Every every school, every agency, every department, every house, they can put a light in their house. The light is the uh, symbol that hoping that Jesus will shine for the house of individual. <laughs> so that's uh, that's that's the light of uh, I, that's a light that. I, I'm just I'm just thinking and observing or searching what the light is. When I'm in when I'm in when I'm uh, when I'm in the darkness or dark dark life, I don't know what what the what the light is, what the light means is for me. So then. When uh, when I under, when I understand the light is uh, they can the light is change my life. So one once that your your life will have a light, of course the the darkness will disappear. So I know that this is the sometimes the Christian we need the light. In our life, okay. In Genesis chapter chapter one verse three it says, "And God said, Let there be light, and there was a light. That the light is uh, even even God. He prepared the place for us that we are convenient." Mm -hmm. So, even in the Genesis chapter chapter one fourteen says, uh, "And God said, Let there be light in the firmament in the heaven to divide the day and uh, from the night, and let them be for sign, for season, and for day and years." So, if we can, if we can. Uh, uh, Learn or study what what God says in this is God will prepare everything for us. Okay, so uh, if our if our life if our life have light, and then we can shine to the others.
every life that have light will be shine. Yeah. Otherwise, sometimes I don't know the I don't know the situation here in in the Canada or the cultural. Because sometimes even even some some Christian they they is still in the in the I they 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 are in the church, but they are they are still not. Uh, there is still not uh, Christian. <laughs> Usually, even uh, but uh, but sometimes I I when when I'm I am start to understand what 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 God's God is or Jesus is. It's just uh, uh, it's a very we did not explain in our own understanding, but we can see that God is moving. In our surrounding, or John, first first John chapter one verse five, is the it's uh, some some references. It's uh, it says this this then the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So God is uh, so. God is light. Even even Jesus said, "I am the light of the world." So you you should to see what what my what the light that I uh, I'm given to you. Even Ecclesiastes uh, chapter eleven verse seven says, "Truly the light is sweet, and the pleasant things it is for the eye of." I to behold the sun. I like I like this uh, Ecclesiastes say that truly the light is sweet. If we can if we can admit or if we can see the light is uh, give or enlighten our life, we are so we can realize what God is, what God wants for us. Uh, in my in my in my experience, I'm uh, when I, when I'm a kids, I'm I'm a teenage, I'm I am a star born. What do you call I'm a star born, star born person. How many times that I can I I'm. Uh, maybe my parents say that uh, he's going in the school, but I'm in the whatever. <laughs> even even sometime in the night, I did not I did not come home. I'm going in the in the, for for our friends and doing. Uh, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to enjoy myself with I did not know. Then, when when I when I am learning about about God about Christ, my mind will enlighten about the Word of God. So that's the that's the things that uh, sometimes we the light is whatever. If we if we off all the light here, we did not we did not know we did not uh, see each other. That's why the one one thing the light is the symbol of God presence to every believers. Okay, so next uh, one that uh, I want to share about light is uh, about spiritual life. You know, this is this is it that we need to have a mental. Or moral or spiritual life. Hello, this is a very, very, very simply word. Uh, uh, maybe uh, you are expert expertise about. <laughs> but I just want to share about the the my 
uh, my experience about how how God give I how God guide me going to the light. Yeah. So this uh, my my thought when when I'm a, I'm when I'm a stubborn stubborn uh, kids before. I thought I even even though I'm I'm going to church and uh, you know I they call me a young people but still I'm living in in the dark because uh, I did I did not understand what the what the what God what God is in my life and then when I'm finished the high school yeah that's the time that I realized I can go to the Bible school to learn more about God. Bible training. Bible training, that's uh, what. So in Psalm, it says, Psalm 119, verse 130 says, The entrance of the word give light, it give understanding unto simple. You can see this. Uh, the According to Psalm, it says that the entrance of the word give light. Entrance of the word. Words give light for individual to give understanding what is simple things that we are living for. Huh? So this, the, this is the intellect or mind that uh, I'm, uh, I'm impressed for, for the worship a while ago. It's, uh, we can, we can, if we understand the song, we can realize what, uh, what we, what, we can, we, we can realize what we are. Okay. So next is the it's a moral. Moral to a moral has to do ex exclusively with man's moral attitude to truth. Moral, that's that's the that's the one identity of Christian. All right. We need to if you if you, if they say that you are a Christian, you have to uh, sustain the good identity. I experienced many, many things in the Philippines in my own ministry. They have, they have people that they want me to pull down. Even I, I, I'm just doing my, uh, I'm just doing my, my work for the Lord. Some people, they, they want me to pull down. They want me to, I, I don't know. If they are zealous or they are, I don't know the ministry where they are. I don't know what, what ministry that they are doing, why they can, why they can uh, sell us for the other, other Christians. So. so for me, I just, I just cover, I just, I just defend myself with the good, uh, good moral and identity. As a Christian, I said, huh? God knows everything. God knows what I'm doing. If that's the, if that's the, if that's the, if they are glad, if they can doing to pull up, pull down some, some other pastors, and then, I don't know. God is. Uh, God knows that that part. That's what I'm experienced. Just twice that I'm experienced like that. So I realized that sometimes. I did not know that God will uh, prepare me for another step of of the ministry. So that's uh, I just I just maintain this is what I, I would like to to share. This is, I just maintain my my identity as a pastor to be uh, I'm aware actually for my moral my identity. As a Christian, I don't like that. I they 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 calling me like 
uh, what what do you call that uh, the doing barrier or doing uh, splitting or something. I just say that uh, uh, I just say that God will guide me in the time that I'm experienced like that. So I, I realize that sometimes my, my, my mind is so very confusing. But if I'm, if I'm thinking that, that God will enlighten my, my mind, I realize that, oh, I can give it to you. All my problem. <laughs> I, did not, I did not carry my own problem. I can give it to the Lord so that God will help me in that, in that time of uh, circumstances, circumstances or trials. So that's, uh, that's a moral that uh, sometimes we, we did not understand. In Job chapter 24, verse, verse 13 says, They are of those that rebel against the light, they know not that the way thereof, nor abide in the path thereof. So we should be, if we are Christian, you should be stunned what the Christian teaches us. Hello. Uh, I, have, I have one experience in my, my, my church in the Philippines one, one time. I, I, have, I have a leader that she, she wants to be, she, she wants to insist that he's a, he's a leader. But, this, but if, I'm, if I'm observing him, he is not a leader. <laughs> because sometimes he biting me at the back. So that's, uh, I said, sometimes if uh, he has a suggestion, I said, yeah, go ahead. Doing what, what, what you want. But you should be consoled for me if you have a plan to have on some activities outside the church. So that's, uh, that's my, that's my, I'm trying to fix my, my identity as, or moral, as a Christian or as a pastor. In my, in my, in my tribe, many times that they can, I have, I have a two friends that they want, uh, that, that two friends is my, what, what we call that, the, uh, that's my uh, devourer. <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> that, that that's two. That, that's two of her friend. It's a, they don't like me to have a good, uh, good ministry. Always that they want. What me? They want me to pull out. Uh, they want me to pull down. Every time, they want me to. They can. Marites, we, we have uh, we have an expression in the Philippines that marites, they say ga, gas, gossiping, gossip. They have a, they they can go and gossip whatever they want. But I said, oh, if you want to believe them, and then just just uh, I don't know for 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 the people if you if you believe them, but uh, but most of the people in our tribe they know that. They are doing like uh, lying and doing bad word in in their in their <clears throat> so the, the the in my in Psalm chapter twenty seven verse one this is uh, what I like uh, the Lord is is uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation this is it. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be? Whom shall I, I be afraid? The Lord said this verse, verse, first part, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So if every one of us, if, if you call you, if you call that you are, you are, you are your Christian, you should have the light that some people see you that you have a light. Amen. 
So, so light is very important. Uh, even here, you need a light because you have a dark, dark time. <laughs> we, have a, we have a night here, so you, you need to have a light. But if, we, if the light will shine upon us, then we are, we are called. We can shine all people who live in the darkness. Man. I have an experience. Uh, Sometimes I'm, I'm difficult to do my... <laughs> to, to, to doing uh, uh, English uh, grammar. <laughs> <laughs> It says that uh, every darkness, when, uh, when the lights appear, the darkness will go away because the light is always true. Yeah. So, so the light, uh, I, I mentioned a while ago that the light is the symbol of, of Jesus or God that uh, lighting our, our life uh, for individual. I don't know what what what's your status here, in in Canada. Uh, maybe it's a different status in the Philippines. But the light that we we can learn how why why we are here in the church is the teaching about Christ or about God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this one I have I have experience everyone. Every one of us, we are from darkness, but we, we transform in light, in the light through, through Christ Jesus. <laughs> Lastly, I, I experienced in the ministry, I had a time, there, there was a time I encountered difficult situation in my, in my life that I did not forget. One day, I'm in a bed, 1 p.m., I'm around sleep. I around to sleep, then suddenly I feel like black heavy, black heavy bed sheet, heavy blanket or bed sheet. I don't know. <laughs> 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 that cover me. Then I'm going in a very very deep sleep. That time. Then the things that I can do is, uh, I just want to pray. Because if I did not pray, maybe the, the heavy black uh, uh, bed sheet or blanket will kill me. <laughs> yeah? But I did, not, I did not written this one. But I, I remember my experience that time. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like black heavy bed sheet that cover me, then I'm going to, I'm going in very, very deep sleep. Then the things that I can do is pray. Then after I pray, I see a very small light so that, la so that the light, I saw, so that light will give me a way to recover because three times that I'm trying to sit on my bed, but it, it, is, it just cover me again, the heavy blanket. I just want uh, that. That's what I'm experiencing in the in the in the in the spiritual realm. That's what I'm experiencing. Yeah. It just maybe that blanket will cover me because that place that I'm I'm ministering the church is very. It's so many 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 pagan or uh, witchcraft. That time, so I experience. Uh, yes, I just. I just I'm just, I'm just seeing the, a very small light, just very small light, and I just want to, I just want to, uh, I just want to go with that light. That that's the light will direct me in my, in my, in my fall asleep to recover myself. So when with three times that I'm, uh, I'm doing like that again, I just realize when I'm waking up. And just realize that, oh my goodness, maybe that's uh, that's the maybe Satan will kill me. And I'm in them just uh, show me that uh, there's a very, uh, it's, it's a very special road. 
Maybe Satan will uh, uh, guide me in the other way to kill me or something. But I'm, the good thing is I see the light and that's what I'm want to going. That he can, I, that, 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 that time that I can recover and I, can, I, I am waking me up. I, I'm waking me up. So that's, uh, maybe if, if I'm thinking right now, it just, well, praise God. The light will shine me. The light will guide me. Maybe I'm not, I'm not here. <laughs> if I'm dying that time, that, uh, I'm not, but, but time is, a, I'm, I'm a fresh uh, pastor. So I experience the spiritual attack. Many things is I'm struggle in the, in the ministry. So to God be the glory. God will deliver me that time that I can experience. So I thank God. Yes, uh, so I have, I have so many, many experience that I want to, I want to put in, in my, in my, uh, in my message, but yeah, I think uh, the time is over. <laughs> <laughs> so because of him, I'm sure that I'm saved because of him, because of God or Jesus. I'm, uh, because of, he sent me to other places and share my experience to him. So my role is obey, obey him, just to do what's right, not the bad. <laughs> so glory to God. This is a very short uh, message, but I know that the God here is the same, the God in, God's in the Philippines. Glory to God. Thanks, Nestor. And that's what we <coughs> need to remember more than anything else. God is around the planet. <laughs> and when we were there, um, we were so blessed by the F Filipino Christian community. But you know, there's problems in the church everywhere. Every country in the world has problems in the church. Nestor shared some of that. And we have the problems when we don't look at the light. So I remember when Vienna started giving little hints about this Nestor guy. <laughs> and she'd take pictures of a group of people. And that she'd say, well, Nestor's in the picture. And Karen and I would look at the picture on the computer. Is it him? Is it him? <laughs> Which one is it anyway? We can't even see him. And then she'd have to tell us who it was. And then we found out that there was more pictures of him. And then, of course, it evolved into something more. And then Karen had to go all the way over to the Philippines to check him out. <laughs> and uh, so he checked out. So we appreciate your heart, Nestor. We appreciate your ministry. And we're here to remember the most important things about God, our Creator. Yesterday we had a memorial service here for Karen Lingle. It was a time to remember. And each time we gather together in Christian fellowship, we're remembering the Jesus who paid for our sin. So we come to the Lord's Supper this morning Joseph's going to come and lead us in a few thoughts and the blessing. So it's, uh, I find sometimes it can get easy to get caught up in routine with anything. And I know with, with our church, we practice communion weekly. Not everyone does. I think around the world, most people do. Uh, most Christians do. And that routine can sometimes lose its flair or... or Sometimes we just, we just do it, we take the juice, we take the bread, we say the prayer, and then it's over, and we go back to our week and uh, do it all over again next week. 
And I think there's something very amazing about that routine. You think it's probably the most practiced routine in the world. We have over a billion, probably over a billion people weekly that make that practice for 2,000 years without fail. And um, I was thinking, actually not, not too long ago, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm very fascinated by historical uh, things in, in history, especially with Christian history. And there is a discovery in Britain uh, not too long ago. And it was in an area where there was a Roman barracks, because Britain was part of the Roman Empire. And they found an old sod building kind of all covered over t with time, you know, layers and layers of time. And they dated it back to a period where there was a Roman, um, Roman legion in that area, keeping the peace, whatever they did. And they found inscriptions, Christian fish, crosses. And to the best of what the archaeologists could figure out, what was this little hut used for. Uh, it was an underground church that Roman soldiers used in the times of persecution. And so in, in the latter part, um, or at the time when, when they believed this was dated to, is when the Christian church was under the greatest persecution it had ever faced, just before it was actually legalized in the 300s after Christ. And so there was a group of Roman soldiers which if they were found out, they would have not, probably not just lost their jobs, probably a, a lot more than that. <laughs> and they were practicing in secret communion. There were signs of, um, of communion being practiced. And, you know, it's amazing to think, you know, how, how we take that for granted in our free country. And we don't have to do it in secret. There's many places in the world today where people do and um, for a lot of people, that, that, that bit of communion with, with Christian fellowship, with brothers and sisters, and remembering the light, which is, I, I really believe that's why Christ gave us that gift of communion. And to reflect on Nestor's message, it's not just remembering something that Jesus said or in the Bible. It's, it's actually an activity to do to physically do and ingest even the light. And, um, you know, when you think of people that would actually do something that they could lose their lives for or their freedom, I think that's a pretty amazing thing to do. And Christ gave his life for us. And if ever the time comes where we have to risk our lives to take that ritual, I think that would be a beautiful thing. So I'll just lead in a quick prayer as we do that. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, and we thank you for the gift that you left with us before you left earth, before you sacrificed yourself. And we thank you that the memory of your truth and your light lives on in us. And as we remember your life and your sacrifice in this, in this supper that we take together. We ask that our love for one another is reinforced and our strength to walk in your ways is increased. In your name, amen. So a song that, that um, extols the blessings of the tree on which Jesus was hung and so placed himself under the curse of the law for us.
uh, I just wanted to acknowledge this morning Ella, <laughs> Vicky's good friend Ella, lost a grandson this past oh, week. So sorry. He was just 45 years old. Oh. And so, Ella, our thoughts and our prayers go to you today mm -hmm. as you are going through a time of grieving. And Vicki, thank you for your friendship to her. Mm. May the Lord in his love offer you grace and healing. Mm -hmm. I've never seen the word coffee in the Bible. <laughs> but I think if Jesus were here in this day, I think he'd drink coffee. <laughs> so I think it's a Christian thing to do. And, um, well, what is the Christian thing to do is to have fellowship. That's what we're called to have fellowship with one another. That's, that's what church is about, Christian community, common unity. And so let's enjoy some common unity, which includes coffee and other drinks. So may God bless us today. Let's pray for you today. So Holy Father, I just pray you'll bless the church. This part of the valley that gathers together, we ask your safety upon us, you would prosper our souls, that you bring us back next week. And a special blessing would be rested on Ella at the loss of her loved one and throughout her family, that they would find comfort in some knowledge of you. Lord, we just want to say to you, we love you today. We thank you for your loving us. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, that you are indeed the light of the world, and that we reflect your light wherever we go. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all. My love to everybody. Have a safe and happy week. God bless you.